Hello everybody, welcome. Two years ago, I made this the ver first version of the shader for Godot 3. And then I waited. <laughs> like everybody else, I waited for Godot 4. And I'm happy it's finally here. And here I am, updating the shader. As you can see, it looks quite much like the same. It still has the same functionalities. It does pretty much everything. The idea is to make it look the same, but using the new new stuff that Godot 4 brings and the the new performance enhancements of course the new shadows this new volumetric um, fog here amazing all looks really really good and yeah let me show you how it looks in the editor okay um, so this is how the the shader looks like as you can see I start off with this block of defines. It's the multiprocessors, and they're really, really useful. The idea is that if you want to use transparency, if you want to use uh, emission, if you want to use a normal map, um, ambient occlusion, or whatever, you just erase these, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Of course, you still have to, to save it. For example, uh, let me show you this, this thing here. Uh, so this is uh, how it looks like on the on the material. As you can see, it's divided in sections. This is the new uh, group group uniforms. They're very very useful. And if I turn on one of these, for example, if I turn on emission. I don't know it. <laughs> there it is. It shows up. It, 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 it's that simple. Ideally, how I, I did it was that I, I made many, many different versions here. So I can separate for every material. It makes things run a little bit smoother. So it's, it's better for performance. And another thing that is also very useful are the shader globals. You see, in the previous version, I was using uh, Fresnel smoothness. It was called Rim smoothness, uh, an, an uniform that was present in all, all, all materials. The outline color, the outline width, the specular smoothness, it was present in all materials. But in all honesty, it wasn't that really necessary because all materials would have the same values for these. Unless you want like your, your game to look less uniform. But that's not the most of the case. It's not the, the, the goal of a, a tomb shader. So I turned them into glo uh, globals. It's new. It wasn't present in Godot 3. One thing that I used that was very useful too was the, the diffuse, diffuse uh, curve. It was a uh, sampler. I, it, it wasn't added here because right now samplers are, are bugged. I can set it up here. For example, I think I used a, a curve or I used a gradient. I think gradients are a little bit easier to, to set up. I can just set it easier like that, I think. Yeah. So right now when I set it up, I can sample the this curve here on my shaders. The problem is that the moment I close the editor, when I open it again, it will be gone. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just bugged. I hope they fix it. And whenever they they do, I'll update the shader, I'll put the includes there, and I'll, I'll use it. But right now it's bugged. Yeah, if you remember on the previous shader, uh, the specular and the Fresnel Right now I'm calling it Fresnel, I think Fresnel is a better name, but on the first version it was called Rim, Rim Lighting. But, but yeah, they, it, it wasn't a color. It is now, I think colors are better. First of all, yes, um, the, whole, the whole idea is that uh, the RGB is just a color. Before, I think I had like a power, an intensity value that multiply the, 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 the color of the light. Now, I think 
it's better to have the whole color multiplying the, the color of the light because it's better to make uh, different colors with different materials and in, in, in particular metals they they don't reflect the light uh, as as it is like they, they tint it a little bit they put some some little tint of their own and yeah it's it's it's, it's better and I'm using the the alpha value here as the the size of the the thing let me show you if I increase it see the specular blob is increasing here no I'm changing the, the wrong one <laughs> yes here see specular blob the, the size of it is now the, the alpha value and the same thing is is the, the fresnel the size of the, the fresnel the fresnel light here is the the alpha value and the the color is just the, the color of course too I mean see it, it tints the, the the light a little bit I I really like it I think it's very very useful it makes for cooler new types of materials and yeah everything else remains the same the base texture is the, the albedo we have a specular texture that's just uh, the same way how it works here RGB values are the same RGB values here and the alpha values here are the the size of the, the specular blob in the Fresnel uh, width here the band and yeah this is pretty much it. I don't want this, this video to be super long like the, the first one. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. And of course, it's all open source. I'm not uh, not, not gonna stop you guys from, from learning, from using it. You can take it, mess, up, mess around with it. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, keep making awesome games. And goodbye. Thank you for watching.